The gate is moving. The second elimination for the Breeders' Crown, three-year-old Philly Pace, purse of $25,000. The first five finishers will be in the final. Field of 10, here they come. And they're off, CC Spice is out of there under Campbell urging. Jasper Avenue uh, seizes on the inside, the Grace Track, and engages CC Spice around the first turn as Loyal Opposition gets away well in third around the first turn. Supplemental entry here, CC Spice and Campbell oh, fired up early, opens up by three lengths to the quarter mile. And it's uh, Jasper Avenue in second with uh, Loyal Opposition third past the quarter. Maple Lady got away fourth. It's Please Me Please in the fifth position. Armbro Amaretto sixth at this point. Then it's Kissed by a Fool. Near the back odds on Charmaine, Shooby Dooby Doo, and My Fantasy. The opening quarter was a hot 26 and four. So Campbell throttles CC Spice down here and rashes out that speed. Jasper Avenue in the second spot with Loyal Opposition third. Here comes a Please Me Please and Miller gets that one in gear. And Armbro Amaretto is out. She's second over and following the live cover. Maple Lady back to sixth and shuffled past the half. Kissed by a Fool gets in with third over. Followed by Shuby Dooby Doo and odds on Charmaine from the back of the pack. My Fantasy still trails the half. 55 and 4, 29 second breather for CC Spice here at 7 to 2. Please Me Please comes calling first over for Miller. Perfect trip for Jasper Avenue. We'll need racing room. Armbro Amaretto also works out that golden second over. Trapped in as loyal opposition fifth now. Third over kissed by a fool. And fourth over's odds on Charmaine. Maple Lady was shuffled out 123 and 3. End of the stretch. It's been CC Spice so far. CC Spice trying to hold on. Game first over. Please Me Please. Locked in as Jasper Avenue squeezing on through. Armbro Amaretto now with open road. In traffic Loyal opposition has pace. All out is kissed by a fool. Between horses, please me, please. Here's Armbro Amaretto on the outside. Armbro Amaretto, the two-year-old crown champion, does it here over please me, please, and loyal opposition. Photo for fourth, 151 and one. He moved to the half-mile pole. Forever Montero, clear by two lengths. Devil will do your races second, two and a half, four then. Loyal opposition pays 320. Hey, there's Luke Jr., Six four exacta twenty one forty six four two trifecta ninety eight dollars six. The pick three was six twelve and six seventy four dollars eighty cents. Post time for the tenth race is ten thirty two in fourteen minutes. Scratch three. Casimir commotion is sick. Exacta trifecta pick three ten eleven and twelve. No changes in races 10, 11, and 12, and 13. The pick four payoff tonight, 5, 6, 12, 6, $203 and 20 cents. We're down the winner's circle here with the only undefeated horse on the card tonight and the only defending crown champion, owner Alan Saul and Luke Ouellette. Luke, Ombro Amaretto, did we uh, discover maybe a new racing style for her tonight? No, and you know, this match, she was great from day one. You know, uh, I might have over-raced her a couple of times, thinking we're the best in every race and put her on the front end, but uh, Steve Condren uh, proved it many times in Canada, taking her back and racing her from the back. She just left passing horses. She's She's been like that from day one, and... Uh, Maybe uh, a little later on in the year, we decided that uh, it might be the way to go for now. Well, you win the chalet, you're not really supposed to be this sharp late in the year. Are you surprised she's held up so well? No, I'm not. Uh, Dave Smith did, has done a great job with her last year and this year, and uh, he seems to know to have her peak at the right time for the right races. And uh, last year, he wanted her to peak for the Breeders' Crown, and she did. And uh, I think uh, that's what he was aiming for this year, and uh, I hope he'll be right. It's been 12 years since the Phillies repeated two and three. Miss Easy, can Ombro Amaretto end that streak? Well, you know, uh, anything is possible, and uh, we're hoping for the best. Okay, Alan Saul, you said that if she wins the Breeders' Crown again, you're going to be the guy jumping up and down again. Is that right? That's for sure. This is the one race you've always wanted to win? Well, I think every horseman's biggest dream is always the biggest race of the year, which I believe is the Breeders' Crown. 
And for me, I'm trying to dream twice, and we're that much closer. So I'm very happy. I'm very excited. It's going to be a long week. <laughs> it's especially gratifying for you. You were out of the business for a while, and then you got back in. Yeah, I basically got out of the racing game for about six or seven years to build up my company. And, uh, but I was still in the breeding business, and I bred some quite good horses. And, you know, I just started buying yearlings again, and she was one of the first. And uh, it's one of those dream stories. Should everybody clear out next week during the race? You going to be ready? You going to be in full uh, full flight there? Well, you know, I think uh, Dave's done a phenomenal job keeping it ready. It's not easy to start racing from May and then, you know, all of a sudden it's the end of November. But we've taken uh, lots of uh, time. We've uh, had some trips where she's been off a month, which is really hard to keep a horse sharp. And the only real bad race I've ever seen her race was in Chicago. But when you look at it, she had two quarters of 54 seconds. She never had a breather. She's off a month, but she shows she's back, and she loves this track. Okay, Alan Saul, she's undefeated. She'll try to make it 7 for 7 in the final next week.